Today, I'm diving into the topic of attraction marketing for your network marketing business. I am interviewing the man, the myth, the legend, John Melton. He is one of the OGs of attraction marketing and also a top 50 earner in the network marketing profession. So he is definitely somebody you wanna learn from. This is a little bit of a longer video, but it's super, super action packed and amazing info in this. So buckle up and get ready for this incredible video. If you're looking to dive even deeper and learn all the things about attraction marketing, I've prepared a free resource for you. You can just click right here down in the description and grab that right now. Super pumped. We've got the John Melton in the house and uh, we're going to talk about attraction marketing today and it's going to be awesome. It always is when you're talking to John. So John, uh, let me just do a quick intro here. So sure. if you're watching this and you don't know who he is, you might have been living under a rock for a while. And because uh, <laughs> he is like one of the top earners, I would say, in the profession. I don't know if you're in the top 100, but I kind of think you might be. And uh, so, you know, whatever he has to say, you probably want to listen. I would take notes if I were you because he always brings the fire and uh, you're also a great storyteller. So I'm always very captivated whenever we have these conversations or I'm learning from you, but just to sort of put it in perspective, John, I think you've been 20 years or so in the profession, yeah. right? So you've yep. been around the block, you've done it a few times, you've been with a few different companies, you've had your ups, you've had your downs. And really, I think the main thing is you are just one of the hardest working people I've ever met. You don't even need to build your business anymore. You don't need to recruit, but you still do it because you just, it's so clear to me, you have that passion and desire to help people. I just think that's so cool. And I'm super honored to have you as an upline. The fact that we have you to be able to help us and support us and that you're available anytime is just the coolest. If we could, I want to jump right into a little bit of value here for the people watching. What is attraction marketing, right? Because like some people, we are in it every day. So we get it. We, right. we live in this world, but for 95% of the network marketing space, they don't do attraction marketing and they're still using the old school kind of traditional yeah. network marketing model, right? Like doing things like yeah. parties and inviting prospects to hotel presentations and presenting the business at a coffee shop with slides or like drawing the circles <laughs> or, you know, that stuff is, yeah. it's very much alive and well out there. And so why don't we just start with that? What the heck is attraction marketing anyway? You know, it's it's funny because- 10 years ago, that was my question. I was hearing all about this like magnetic sponsoring by Mike Dillard and attraction marketing, right? With Fernie and Tim Irway and all these guys, and Ray Higdon and all these legends talking about attraction marketing. And then I saw like Gary Vaynerchuk talking about building a brand. Shalene Johnson talked about building a brand. You know, Brendan Bouchard, all these people, Amy Porterfield, you know, they were, they were talking about attracting people versus having to go find people to pitch and prospect and, you know, that sort of thing. And I got excited because I'd been in network marketing at that point for over 10 years and I was burnt out. I had that uh, MLM PTSD and I found myself in a situation where I was kind of at a crossroads of like, I'm either getting out of network marketing and I'm going to go back into mortgages or real estate doing something more traditional or I'm going to figure out a way to build my business from home, right? You just had a baby, right? We had uh, Dylan. And he was, you know, probably at that time, about four years old. And then Nadia got pregnant with Christina. And I mean, literally, this is how crazy committed we were. Nadia had Christina on a Tuesday. And by the way, she's a 10 pound baby. Okay. 10 pounds, 11 ounces, crazy. But she had, uh, uh, or 10 pounds, two ounces. Dylan was nine pounds, 11 ounces. So both big babies, like our kids did not want to come out, but Literally, she had Christina on a Tuesday and she was at the weekly Saturday training that Saturday. Can you imagine? Right. So that's how committed we were. And we were out every night doing home meetings. You know, you were talking about drawing the circles. You know, we used to do the presentations 6.30 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. every night. And they weren't in our local area. We were. So I live in Maryland. And at that time, we were living south of Baltimore. We were driving over the Pennsylvania line. We were driving south into Virginia, into D.C., Jersey, Delaware, West Virginia. Like, literally, I used to always say, God must want me to drive because I could not, for the life of me, build a team in my backyard. It was like everybody sucked. Everybody sucked if I recruited them within a 30-minute 30, 30 radius of my house. 
But like the teams that would blow up, they're like in Altoona, Pennsylvania, you know, the middle of nowhere, West Virginia. I'm in Amish country in Lancaster. I mean, literally all over God's green earth, we're driving. And then I would see other leaders, they're flying on airplanes. They're literally flying to different markets. And I'm like, is it really worth it? The sacrifice, someone else putting my kids to bed every night, someone else having to raise my children, basically. It wasn't a big deal when Dylan was a baby because he's at home all day. But once he started going to school and he's he's coming home from school and it's like, oh, hey, bud, you know, get him from the bus stop. And it's like, you know, all right, see ya. I got to go do meetings. And Nadia would go do meetings. And that was Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. We would do a leadership training every Friday, every single Friday night. We had a leadership training every single Saturday morning. We had a Saturday training, but they were physical events. Like they were in-person events. So we had to drive. Like I remember we would do Friday night leadership in Frederick, Maryland, which was about an hour in traffic, maybe a little longer. So that was Friday night at seven o'clock. We would do that till like, you know, let's say nine, nine thirty, then drive home and then come back the next morning, come back the next morning, do a Saturday training. It was exhausting. So I was really burnt out and just felt like I started to feel like a bad dad. I remember pulling over one day and it was a Sunday afternoon. And my mom told me like Dylan got a hit in his, his t-ball practice. And I pulled over and I was like emotional. Cause I'm like, what the heck am I doing? Like, this is so stupid. Like, why am I sacrificing weekends and evenings to build a business that quite honestly, I had seen the top people in the company. This is an indication, Jen, that something was broken. The top, top earners in that company The people that were in the top 100 income earners, which by the way, we are in the top 100, probably the top 50 now. And we make more than our upline back then. We make more now, way more than they made back then. And I'm sure they're making a lot less now. So anyway, that's all other conversation. But with that being said, we now get to be with our children. My kids are now 18 and 14. Like we don't miss hardly any of my son's travel baseball games. You know, he's committed to division one baseball. We'll be able to travel and go to all his games if we want to, you know, Christina, you know, she's 14, she's in eighth grade. Like I love knowing that we get to spend time with our kids and make millions of dollars and we do it by helping other people. So the attraction marketing thing was so interesting because it was about building a business online. It wasn't even about the attraction marketing piece as much as it was, I can work from home. Like right now, I'm talking to you. You're in Canada. I'm in Maryland, right? I'm in my bedroom. That's my bed right there. My sauna, my massage chair. This is our desk, our bathroom, our closets. Like, like this is my room. It's my bedroom. I get to build my entire multi-million dollar business from my house and have an and life. What's an and life? An and life is I get to build a multi-million dollar business and make money that I could only dream of and have lifestyle, freedom, all the other things that come with it. So to me, it was worth mastering this conversation and learning how to attract people to me so that I didn't have to go chase after people. I didn't have to go find people that were open to an opportunity. I literally, most days, I literally can't keep up with my inbox. And the only reason I can is because of our virtual staff and all the systems we have in place. But that to me is the icing on the cake. It's being able to help other people. You know, you and I talked about this, right? It's all about making an impact, making an income, but also having the freedom to raise your baby and have mommy care versus daycare. Oh, okay. There's so much I want to unpack in this, but I think in summary, attraction marketing has actually turned your home-based business into a home-based business because any business where you know, they're calling it home base, but you're actually driving or you're going to events and you're not home is not a home base business. It's a Jen, market. they used to have a joke. They, they used to have a joke. This is the only home business where you're never home. And it's yeah. like, ha ha ha. Wait, that's not funny. That's, that's not sad. funny. The whole yeah. goal and what most people start a business like this for is, and you know, some people do it for, they want to make a few extra hundred dollars. Wonderful, right? To be able to contribute financially to their family. But a lot of people are talking about the time freedom, right? If you are the busiest person and you don't have time, then you need this business because it's going to give you time. That's what people say about network marketing. But the reality is much different if you are using those old traditional methods, because you're not home and it's not giving you more time and it never will. Right. right? And that, you know, we can talk about duplication and all the reasons why you need systems and why attraction marketing systems are so key because then it's actually going to give you time freedom. Cause a lot of times 
big leaders, people hit six and seven figures. Maybe they do work from home and that's awesome, but they are literally tied to their phone, tied to their computer, 12, 15 hours a day. And that's not freedom either, but that's another topic. Amen. Um, Amen. So time freedom, the fact that you can actually work from home, be able to spend that time doing the things you want to do in your life, spend time with your family, have hobbies, all that stuff. That's absolutely one of the main, um, it, the key, you know, attraction parts of attraction marketing. But I think there's right. another thing, which I'm going to mention it, but then we, I want to talk about a little more about your story before we dive into this. But another big thing for me that I've noticed about attraction marketing is the quality of prospects. So for me, when I got started in my business, I started nine years ago, I was in a traditional network marketing company and I was keen from get-go, like I wanted the big bucks. I wanted to replace my income. They told me, make a list of a hundred people, like everybody that you can think of, put them on the list. (laughs) And your goal is to go and ask all those people to come to your launches And I had four launch events in my home and I had to have all the snacks and the wine and all the stuff. And then some stranger was going to come because I didn't know any of these people before I started. I literally signed up with my best friend who didn't even prospect me. She just was like, Hey, come and check this thing out and see if it's good for me. So I jumped in with her. I had no idea what I was doing. Didn't know these people. So this stranger is going to like come and present to all of these friends and family in my house. I had no idea what they were going to say. Like I was so terrified, but anyway, when you make a list of a hundred people, you are literally, it is completely selfish. And I know they say like, oh, you're sharing this amazing gift that you have and share it with the world and ask everybody to take a look. The problem with that is for somebody who's brand new, asking all of your friends and family is terrifying, but getting rejected by all these people is very likely because you're literally throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. Right. You might have five, 10 people who are like, oh, this seems pretty cool. Maybe I'll jump in. But the other like 90 or 95 people might not invite you to the next Christmas party or might avoid you at the grocery store. And that's awkward, right? right? So I'd love to talk more about the quality of leads that come from Mm -hmm. attraction marketing. But before we get into that, I want to dive a little bit more into your story. So obviously in 20 years, you didn't do attraction marketing from the, from the jump. You were doing yeah. the traditional it wasn't stuff. A thing. Yeah, it wasn't a thing. Right? It wasn't a thing. Yeah. And so at what point did you sh- make the shift and how did that impact things in your business? Well, you know, one thing for me that I think everybody can relate to is I, I, I felt like I was always having to find people that were open to the opportunity, kind of what you were talking about, right? With prospecting, reaching out to people, cold market, calling people. I would literally pull cards off, business cards off bulletin boards, like just whatever I had to do, right? Hey, hey Ali, uh, you were highly referred to me and I'm expanding a business in your area. And I was wondering if you're keeping your business options open because I'm going to be in the area next Tuesday and Wednesday. And I'd love to sit down with you and share this information with you if you're open. Like that's literally what I did and had to do to get in front of people. But I, and, I, and I you were looking for I, high quality people, right? You were exactly. looking for like I business was, owners, entrepreneurs. That's the thing. You yes. were trying to up the quality game, right? Yes. 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 And that was actually 2008. So way before marketing, you know, conversation, social media was really popular. Like we did recruit our first person from social media from MySpace in 2006. And I did download Facebook in 2008, but we didn't get serious with marketing online until 2013, five years after we downloaded Facebook, right? But I did notice 2008, 9, 10, uh, that there were a lot more entrepreneurial minded people out there that were open to additional income streams. So we figured that out before we even started doing the attraction marketing thing, right? And then when I started learning about attraction marketing. I'm like, wow, like I need more leads. Most people that I know need leads. And most of us don't want to have to rely on our warm market. So I really figured out that number one, it's great to recruit up a players, business minded people, entrepreneurial minded people. But then also, how could I get those people to see me? pay attention to me? How could I build a network, a following, an audience of people that thought like me? And it was by sharing content, right? Showing up as a person of value and sharing content that can solve problems, 
offer solutions, share stories, tips. People will hear your personality, your perspective, right? The three E's, you entertain, empower, and educate. And we actually like to enter train, right? Because we like to have fun. Those are our favorite people to listen to, right? The people that make us laugh. Uh, they make us think. Those are our favorite speakers to listen to. So Nadia and I, especially when the two of us are together on stage, like we like to entertain, like we have a good time. I think people really enjoy listening to us, not just because of the content and the information, but because of the inspiration and the humor. That's our personality though, right? So we started putting ourselves out there on camera the same way we were speaking on stages, but Instead of only being able to expose people to us that were physically in front of us in the room at that time, we could get in front of unlimited eyeballs on social media, online. Now, I will say, initially, when we were paying attention to attraction marketing, it was mostly like YouTube and blogging and learning about ads and funnels and search engine optimization. and All that stuff is so confusing, and it wasn't simple and duplicatable. So what we found is using attraction marketing on social media was the easiest way to duplicate the average person, teaching them in those early days, posting uh, pre-recorded videos. And then Periscope came along and then Facebook Live came along. So now we're doing live videos and we're doing live video challenges. And, you know, some people would do it, but a lot of people wouldn't. And then years and years and years and years of us just being very persistent, we built this massive following and, you know, we're, we're network marketing top earners, but we're also, you know, selling our own courses and we have ways to monetize and you can literally create your own economy. If you build a brand, you build a following. I mean, you think about it, there's people out there, kids that have like a YouTube channel where all they do is make slime. They are monetizing slime making. There's kids playing video games and other kids are watching that kid play video games and they're making money. So to act as if it's not a thing or to be like, like blind to it, that's crazy, right? Like we know there are so many opportunities. If you can build an audience, you can build a following, you can, you know, build value in an audience where they're like, you know, I show up for Jen because I know what I'm going to get from Jen. I know Jen is going to deliver the goods. I know she's going to help me. Because if kids can do it, if kids can monetize a personal brand and attract other kids to make money, I think us adults can too. We just have to figure out what are we excited about? What are we passionate about? It's like you said in the very beginning when you were introducing me, you know, that I'm still recruiting. I'm still in the game. I'm still in the trenches. And it's because I'm obsessed with it. Like, I love what I get to do every day and the impact I get to make. I mean, listen, why do you think Tom Brady didn't want to retire? right? It's not because he needs the money. It's his love of the game, right? So that's the same thing in a business like this, where if you really love what you're doing, now it takes time to develop the confidence. It takes time to build up your belief in yourself and have that clarity of who you want to be. But you hit the nail on the head when you said you can attract better people. And here's the thing I love about attraction marketing the most, because look, I still prospect, I still pop the question and ask people if they're open. But of course, Jen, you know this too, right? You're having the same level of success with, with these conversations. It's that when someone comes to me, my close ratio is much higher because Absolutely. they've been following me for weeks, months, or in some cases, years. And let's say they've been following me for four years. When they're looking for an opportunity, they don't even consider other options. They're in my they don't even know what They're reaching they out They don't even know what company you're with and they don't care. Exactly. They want to join exactly. you. They want to join Bingo. you because you built that brand. Yes. Right. Yes. So 100. Let let let's talk a little bit more about the quality thing because I want people to understand what we mean by when we're saying like the quality of the lead is so much higher. Yes, because they've been following you and they've you've built that no like and trust with them for sure. That's right. part of it. But for me, I think the biggest differentiator is that not everybody is your prospect when you're talking about attraction marketing. So right. that's one of, in my, there's a couple different issues with traditional network marketing. One being that it, there's so many people and the competition is like getting bigger and, and more and more and more. And so how do you stand out? And I think attraction right. marketing absolutely is a way for you to do that because you're building your brand and not just like spamming your company out there because really then you're just selling widgets and who cares, but people want to be attracted to you. So building your brand is important. But on top of that, in traditional network marketing, we are basically considering every single person who breathes air 
a prospect, yeah. right? If, you know, the three foot rule is what we were taught. If somebody is within three feet of you, you know, strike up a conversation, see if they might be open to your products or your business. It's like, that's terrible. Well, here's the other thing. Nobody does that. That's the other problem. It's not just it about it being weird. <laughs> Nobody does it. Like, I remember us talking about that in trainings all the time. Very rarely did someone say, yeah, man, I literally talk to everyone everywhere I go. Those people are very few. And there's more people yeah. out there that'll do videos than will just talk to anybody within three feet of them about an For opportunity. Sure. You're so right. You're so right. For sure. Yeah. They might talk to their waitress that in certain moments they'll like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then they, they get brave and they do it. Um, but ultimately the, the level of rejection when you try to approach everybody or see everyone as your prospect is incredibly high. If you yes. use attraction marketing, you have a target market. You have specific type of person that you are talking to, right? Not everybody's your prospect. You are attracting a specific person kind of person who has a very specific need and problem that they want solutions for. And when you bring them the value, you're giving them the solutions. And so you're attracting people that already fit this higher quality lead description, right? Let's Attract also say this too, Jen. Let's also say this. The easiest people to attract are people that are just like you. People that have the same problems as you. People are, people get caught up in that target market conversation. I did a training on this yesterday and I'm like, stop with the target market stuff. Like you need to figure out who your target market is, but stop overthinking it and just go, who are you? What are your problems? That's your target market. Your target market are people just like you, the same problem, same background, same personality from the same you know town. Same. That's where you start. Now you'll branch out. You'll branch out because it's just inevitable. You will. But, you know, if, if you think about the people, like if you're a nurse, right, what are the problems that nurses have? Speak to that when you're creating content, right? How old are you? Well, I'm 35. Okay. Well, I'm not 35. I'm 42. But, you know, if someone's like, hey, I'm a, I'm a 35-year-old mom that is also a nurse, like that's who you should start talking to. That person probably has the same problems you have, has the same, you know, issues and, and would have the same goals and dreams and things that they hate, things that they love. And it really is the, the most effective way to create content is you think about you or a person just like you, and that's who you talk to. So I love that you mentioned that because so many people are like, what, what should my bio be? What should my brand coloring be? What should, like they get caught up in the, the, the detailed stuff that like, it literally doesn't matter. That stuff is secondary. Like, Jen, be honest, how many times do you even read someone's bio in this day and age? Really, I don't. Actually, that's a really good point. It yeah. is important if someone reads it for it to say the right thing. <sighs> right. right. People aren't reading bios. They're not reading captions even as yeah. much these days. Yeah, you know? they're, not. So, they're not. And if it, anything, I saw Bob Heilig post this the other day. I thought it was so smart. Instead of talking about all your accolades, maybe test it out talking about all your failures. Like, you know, <laughs> Like as an example, I could say, you know, um, MLM PTSD, you know, overcomer or, you know, 15 years sober. Like you can maybe try to try to play with it where it's not just like top six figure earner, you know, ambassador yeah. with such and such company, like all your accolades, because in many ways it's not as relatable. Yeah. Like you could say to it took, took seven years to hit six figures. Boom. Because yes. that, like when someone looks at you, they're like, oh, well, he's John Melton. Like, I can't do what he does. But you didn't start out with this big brand and all these yeah. followers. You literally started out as a 20 something year old guy who knew yeah. nothing about what you were doing. You just took the actions and you made all the mistakes. And it took you seven years to hit six figures. Bingo. Like that, that gives me comfort because it only took me five years to hit six figures. And so I'm like, I'm already kicking John's ass. <laughs> yes. But see, that's the thing, right? It's like you're showing people what's possible. And that's way more inspiring than just talking about your successes. And people don't care about your winning season if they don't know what you lost in your losing season. They don't know about the struggle, the journey. And that's why I always bring it back to that. I always talk about my humble beginnings and I spent more money than I made. And I, I was a hot mess and it took me six, seven years to crack six figures and 16 years to become a millionaire because that's more relatable and that's more realistic to people. And it gives them that hope that, Hey, 
if she can do it or he can do it, then maybe I can too. And that's really the whole point of that conversation. And it's the same thing when you're creating content. Like if you make it seem too good to be true, it's probably going to turn off the majority of people. But if you keep it real and you're honest with people and you're vulnerable and authentic and all those buzzwords we hear about, but really getting real and raw, like you are going to find more people paying attention to you because social media, a lot of times seems like a highlight reel. And it, it gets to that point where people, they tune out because they're like, that person's fake or they're lying. Or, you know, I, I can't even imagine that level of success. And I think that's why we always have to bring it back to reality. And, and, you know, this is more of a high level conversation, but if you start building your personal brand and you're watching this video right now and you want to start attracting people, you start with people just like you and the pain points they have, the problems they have, and you offer solutions. And by the way, you don't have to be the expert. You don't have to be the expert. You can share the things you're learning from the experts you're following. And again, like, let's say this, watch this. Let's say I learned something from Gary Vaynerchuk or I learned something from Oprah Winfrey, whatever, right? I learned something from them. You may not see that, that post they did, that video they did. You may not read that book they wrote, but I did. So now I can share with you the things that I'm learning, the things I'm experiencing, taking you on the journey with me. And again, you're gonna come off more, number one, more real, more relatable, but also, People will see that there's there's uh, they'll have more comfort and accessibility in reaching out to you versus they're not going to get in touch with Oprah. They're not going to get in touch with with Gary Vaynerchuk. Right. But they can get in touch with Jen Goodall. They can get in touch with John Melton. So there's more likelihood of them being able to connect with you. And again, you're just becoming more approachable, more relatable. And you know what? If you get really good, this is where the magic happens. Shareable. If people start sharing your story, sharing your content, sharing your videos, sharing your memes, sharing you with their network of people, and you build that, there's a book literally called 1,000 True Fans. If you build that network of people that they just love your content, they share your stuff, like they're, they're an advocate for you, they're an ambassador for you, they promote you, you'll never worry about money again. Oh, so good. Okay, so... Guys, obviously, you know, we're, we're a few minutes in here and I'm already sold on why attraction marketing is the way to go. Listen, if you are somebody who wants to learn more about it and you're keen, you just want to dive deeper, just drop the word attract in the comments and I'll get you a resource for you to continue to learn this. Um, but John, help me understand. And I know we can't talk income and we wouldn't do that anyway. Um, cause everyone's journey is different, but help me help paint the picture for the person who's watching, what happened to your business when attraction marketing became the way, the strategy that you followed to build it? Like, where were you before? And then what happened afterwards? Yeah, it's actually pretty simple. We went from multiple six figures a year to multiple six figures a month. I mean, that's really what it boils down to. Now, part of that was our last company got shut down by the FTC. So we joined a new company, the company that you and I work in together now, right? Been here seven and a half years. So there was, there, there's a, there, it was like a perfect storm. So there was a combination of variables, right? The company, the timing of social media, us building a personal brand and becoming more well-known in the profession. Then we launched a new product. Then we launched another product. We created this ATM system, ad tag message using Facebook groups, creating simple systems to help people build their business online. And we weren't just teaching attraction marketing, but also curiosity marketing. Attraction marketing is great because it's like a magnet. You attract people that like you, but you're also going to repel people like a magnet that wouldn't like your stuff. They won't follow your, your videos, your content. And that's fine. That's We don't want those people, right? But then you can basically intertwine your curiosity marketing around your product and opportunity, right? You weave it into that conversation where you're, you know, kind of like we're doing right now, we're talking about attraction marketing and sharing value with people. But then also people that might watch this might say, well, what company are they with? Well, how can I get more information about the company that they're in? Because our company doesn't teach this stuff. Our company doesn't have the systems. Our company doesn't teach people how to create curiosity. We're in network marketing and I know nothing about marketing. I've never learned how to build a brand. I learned more from this conversation than I've learned from, you know, three years of my, my company. Now, all of a sudden, those people are in my inbox or in your inbox, and not only are they higher caliber, which we talked about, but they're also easier to enroll 
it's so much easier to sign someone up as a customer or as a distributor or to buy your course if they found you and they're following you and they're getting free value from you. It's more likelihood that when they raise their hand, now it might take weeks, months, and even years before they actually reach out and request information, which is why you also have to be proactive in connecting with the people that are liking, following, viewing. Like, I can't stand when people complain to me, like, oh, I'm not getting a lot of likes. I'm not getting a lot of engagement. I go, first of all, that tells you your content isn't that good yet. So that's fine. You can get better. Don't be bitter. Get better. But number two, what about the five likes you got? What about the six comments you got on your last post, your last video? Did you reach out to those people? Like, well, well no, but you know, they, they didn't, I mean, it wasn't really about the business or it wasn't about the product or, you know, I don't really know those people. And it's like, dude, hello. Like if they're liking, commenting, following, friend requesting, watching your stories, reach out to them, make a connection, have a conversation. You are a professional conversation starter. I would always rather create a conversation, build a relationship with someone that's watching, viewing, commenting, liking, following, friend requesting, they're, they're, they're a lead. Now your job is to turn them into a prospect, right? But if you don't make that connection, you're just sitting back twiddling your thumbs, waiting for people to request information. You're missing out on a, a very large group of people that may not ask you about your product or opportunity. They may not reach out to you, but if you reach out to them, then they might ask because they're like, wow, like I follow lots of accounts. I send out lots of friend requests. I comment on things all the time. I never hear from those people. So that's how you talk about standing out. That's how you stand out. Yeah. Personal conversation, that one-on-one -on -one interaction with people can go a long way. And it makes you more, again, accessible and approachable. I think, I think you just hit on something really key here is that one of the pitfalls of attraction marketing is that people think like, oh, I'm just going to put content out there and wait for everybody to come to me. Now, yeah, yeah there is a percentage of people that will come to you, yeah. but there's also some people who are just kind of watching. They're not really sure. They might not leave a comment. They might not engage with you but you can be proactive and have a conversation with them. And then of course, now everyone probably goes, oh, well, what do I say? I need scripts. No, 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 you don't need scripts. You just need to be a human being. Like yes. what would you say to somebody who just watched your stories? Right. I don't know. Hey, thanks for watching my stories. And then maybe you watched their stories and you can say, Hey, I just saw you went to this, you know, baseball game and that's so cool. You know, you might say my son's in baseball and blah, blah, blah. And now you're talking about something that you've created. Oh. Connection on, right. And you're just being a human being. And I have to say, John, you like, you are probably one of the masters at this. I know my upline who's in between us. Um, you met her in a blogging group on Facebook. Yep. And you didn't even try to recruit her. You were literally just answering her questions because you knew stuff about blogging. You'd been doing it and you were able to give some value and help guide her. And then you guys got in messenger and she started opening up to you sharing and you were like, Hey, listen, I'm here to help. And then she ended up joining your business and yeah. she became like an elite three, which nobody knows what that is, but that's huge. It's like top, top, top <laughs> rank. It's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. And it's a big deal. And you never, you know, you didn't have to chase her recruiter because you guys built that connection and she came to you and then boom, you have another elite. And then you have me another elite. On, and like, you've got this whole leg of business from meeting somebody in a blogging group and being a human being. So I think it's just so key that we say, when we talk about attraction marketing, we talk about being proactive and I'm not talking about prospecting that I don't believe that you need to like actively prospect. If you are a really strong attraction marketer in the beginning, sure. You're going to ask beginning. people to have a look at what you're doing. If they're the right person, right. Yeah. Don't be desperate. You know, think about who you want to work with and ask those people. But as yeah. you go on, really, all you need to do is just be having the most conversations. And when yeah. you do that, People are going to ask you, they're going to say, oh, I just saw that video you did where you interviewed John Melton. Like, I I'm curious, what, what's this business you guys are in, right? Yeah. If I start a conversation with them. They're more likely to feel open to ask me that versus if I just let them come to me, I probably won't get that many people who reach out. Yep. No, I it's so true. And, and, and the biggest really thing too, when, when you're connecting with these people on the back end, it's, it's becoming a great question asker, listening to the, the, the answers and, you know, not just having that commission breath mentality, 
right? But you're, you're genu genuinely trying to help people. Now, there are going to be times, like you said, where you're going to have to pop the question. I encourage people to pop the question, whether it's leave it to the product, leave it to the business, ask for referrals every single day. But at the end of the day, it's so much easier if you can identify pain points, you got people coming to you, you've got people that like, if you genuinely like someone, you're like, I like this person's vibe, they're already posting on social media, or they're positive, they're cool, they're entrepreneurial, they, they got good energy, like, you should be connecting with those people and nurturing those relationships while you're continuously creating curiosity in your stories. You're out there doing your attraction marketing, putting out content, sharing your story, sharing tips, you know, offering solutions. And while you're, you're, you know, having conversations, you're planting those seeds, right? You're planting seeds. And then you're watering those seeds with your content, with your videos, with your storytelling, with all those other things that you're going to do to show up in the marketing side while you're prospecting on the back end. It's just doing both. Doing both yeah. is what's made me a fortune. And like you said, we went from like six figures a year and grinding and sacrificing and working so freaking hard to making what we were making in a year, making that every 30 days but not having to work as hard. Like, you know, being able to go to see Ant-Man last night with my family, right? And, and not feeling like, oh my gosh, like, you know, my phone's vibrating the whole time. And like, my phone is always muted. Like I work when I wanna work, there's never any emergencies, right? There's never a situation where like, I gotta walk out of a dinner or I've gotta like wake up in the middle of the night or I gotta wake up super early. I mean, unless it's like traveling, stuff like that. But the fact is, once you build this foundation and you get to that point where like, you can create that schedule. You can be very intentional with your content creation, with who you're attracting, how you're solving problems, how you show up every day, how you work your business. You know, you get to that point where it's like, it's so much fun. And even the hard stuff you actually enjoy doing because you know the impact it's going to make and the results it's creating. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So listen, um, you know, for the, to, to the person who's watching this right now, there is a good chance that you might be thinking like, traction marketing. I know this is the way I need to go in my business, but you might be anticipating some of the pushback that you might get from your upline or the business model that you're part of. Maybe they just don't believe in this stuff. And it's wild to me that that's still a thing, but it really is. Like I know personally for me, five years ago, when I was with my first company, um, I was so excited. I was learning all this stuff. In fact, I was learning a lot from you, John, on the ATM system and just like all this stuff that was working for you. Clearly it was working. There was no denying it. And I brought that back to, you know, my, my team and, and just, you know, that, that company. And there was a lot of pushback and a lot of hesitation. And listen, I get it. Change is, is scary. Yeah. Doing things that you don't know if they're going to work or not. It's scary, but ultimately my, my belief is in this business and in anything where, you know, you're using, leveraging the internet, social media, all that stuff, change is so fast. You have to evolve. If you don't evolve, you're going to get left behind. And so for the person watching, you might be thinking like, I'm worried I might get that same pushback. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to implement this where I am. Another thing you might be feeling is like, I've already been here. I've already been grinding this out for three, four, five years. Like, I don't want to be a quitter, right? There's this whole thing, this, this culture and network marketing, like never quit, never give up. Well, I'm going to say never quit on your dreams, but don't be that person that keeps banging your head against the wall, doing the same thing and not getting a different result. Like that's the definition of insanity. For me, I was in this business model for like almost four years. I recruited 80 people into that business. One of them was having a decent level of success. So my team wasn't winning and I barely was. And I'm like, this is not working. Something has to give. So mm -hmm. be brave enough to have a look and see like what's working, what's not working. And don't be afraid to have those conversations. If you meet resistance, if you're not getting the support you need, that's the, the point in time where you might want to think about like, maybe I'm not in the right place. And I'm just yeah. going to be honest with you. Like not everybody's in the right place. Yep. There's this loyalty and this like put the blinders on mentality, which I think is, you know, it's great for the average person. Yeah, they need to stick with it. I don't believe in hopping around and, and jumping to all the next new shiny things, but for God's sakes, if it's not working for you, you need to do what's right for you. You're in this for a reason. What was your why? Why did you get started? 
are you able to achieve that where you are? And if you're not, and if you're getting all the roadblocks, then you got to have a look. So for me, that's what I did. I had a look at, okay, what, what else was out there? What company was already doing attraction marketing years and years ahead? Not only that, but like social retail and this whole different model that like corrected a lot of the, the other issues that existed in traditional network marketing. And for me, I made a jump. Was it uncomfortable? Of course. It was scary. I had no idea whether or not it would be successful or not, but I knew I needed to do something different. So here's what I want to say to the person watching. You may or may not be looking for a business that you can plug into and run with. For me, I didn't want to spend another four years trying to implement all of these attraction marketing strategies and systems. Systems is, is key here, right? And we'll talk about that in a second. I didn't want to spend years doing that. And so I wanted to plug into a place that already had that. And that's yep. what I did. I plugged in. I went from doing an average of like 20, 25,000 in team volume after four years hustling and grinding in that traditional model to coming over here and building a team that hit over 200,000 in volume. So, I mean, night and day difference, right? And that was like only three years in that we did that. So, I mean, clearly there was a difference and yes, attraction marketing was a big part of that, but the other part was systems. So I just want to kind of finish the conversation here with, I think doing attraction marketing on its own is absolutely huge. But when you recruit people in order to have duplication, you have to have the right systems in place. Yep. So just talk for a second about why it's important to have a system. I know you are like basically the well, every, yeah. of ATM, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, every company says they have a system, but most companies system is like you said, in the beginning, make a list, pitch your friends and family, invite them to an opportunity presentation. And look, there might be some degree of that, right? But that, that is such an old school system. I'm not saying you shouldn't talk to people you know, because people you know probably want to get healthy and wealthy and all the things. But, you know, the fact is, there's going to be a lot of people that come in with, with you know, essentially very limited experience, influence, resources, they have limited time. So it's so much more valuable to have a system and show people the simplicity. And you hit the nail on the head, ATM. Like, I literally create curiosity, create conversations. I find people that are open to a conversation. I add them to the group. I tag them in a video. I tag them in a testimonial. It depends on what they're looking for, right? Are they looking for opportunity? Tag them in the opportunity video. If they're looking for, um, you know, weight loss or anti-aging collagen supplementation, they're looking for a women's health product. Like I'm going to tag them in the appropriate resource or video. So I promote the tool. Don't be a fool, use a tool. So I'm using the tools. I'm using the group. There's social proof in these groups. There's testimonials in these groups. It's a community. So I'm not the only one posting. Everyone is posting in the group. Everybody's collaborating and, 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 and supporting one another. And then on top of that, I say, hey, look, all you have to do is what I'm doing with you right now. You add people to a group, you tag them in a video, tag them in a testimonial, whatever that looks like, add tag message, you send them a follow-up message. Hey, let me know when you have a chance to watch the video. Let me know once you're in the group, I'll tag you in the video. You know, you can set up group chats. And that's the other thing I love. Instead of doing three-way calls and Zooms, we do group chats. And like everybody can respond when they have the availability. It's so freaking simple. And it's how we built this multi-million dollar organization that does millions of dollars a month in sales. I mean, we had the best year we ever had last year, $75 million in sales. And actually, it was more than that in dollars, right? That's just in the points, right? 75 million points and probably like 80,000 or 80, 80 million dollars last year. And I just think it's awesome because, you know, we've got people like you that have walked away from other companies and they're having more success and their teams are having more success. And to me, that's what it's all about. Like, I don't care if I make a fortune, if I have a broke team, if I have a team that's struggling, you're still going to look, there's still going to be struggle. You're still going to have rejection, adversity, all the things, but I'd rather struggle working my online business than to have to be out doing the offline activities I used to have to do. So not only was I struggling, but I also wasn't home. At least if you're struggling from home, you're struggling from your freaking phone, right? Like it's just a lot easier for the average person to build a business around their busy schedule, their busy lives. All of us have things, kids priorities, different things that we're doing, right? And I think it's really important to understand that if you if you create a system for people that 
creates results, you're going to have loyalty, you're going to have retention, you're going to have uh, a business that can stand the test of time. And that's really what it's all about. It's like, who cares if you make a bunch of money in a year, if it goes out of business in two years, three years, right? The fact that, you know, someone like Rena, someone like yourself, like we've been working together for years and people are happy. They're, they're, you know, they're winning. Yes, they're making money, but they don't feel burnt out. They don't feel, uh, um, you know, that, that, that animosity that comes with building a business in the old school way, where it's like, you almost like, it's like the more you make, the busier you are, the more stressed out you are. You start to have like this, like this, this unhealthy, like toxic environment and relationship with your leaders and with your upline and with your company, because you're like, the more I make, the bigger it gets, the more stressed I am, the more I have to work. So I think this system has really helped us create independence and give people an opportunity that creates not just the the money, but also the time freedom. And that's the piece, right? That's the missing piece with a lot of these businesses, you know, where, like you said, people are working 15, 18 hours a day. Like that's, that's not what people want in this day and age. No, that's not freedom. No. Yeah. For me in my previous company, when I was doing that 20 to 25,000 volume in a month, I was hustling for that. I was going to my full-time job during the day. And then in the evenings, I was going and doing like product parties at strangers' houses. And I'm an introvert. Like that was awful. I was also getting up early in the morning and meeting prospects at a coffee shop to do a presentation before I went to work. I would use my lunch hour to do presentations. I mean, I was like, I burned myself out so bad. And I think burnout is probably a word a feeling, a a challenge that so many people are feeling in their network marketing business. I think that's the biggest thing that we've been able to solve through attraction marketing, but also through these systems. And so I will say this, if you are someone who is feeling that burnout and you're like, you know what, I'm tired. I don't want to put this stuff into place. Like I felt that's exactly how I felt. And there's nothing wrong with that. You're not giving up. If you're looking for a team that's winning, where you can plug in, the systems are in place. It's all automated. You can literally just run and your team will be able to plug in here and have success. If you're looking for that, go ahead and drop the word team down below and I'll get in touch with you. We can get you in a chat with John and we'll see if this is a place for you. So I'm going to leave it there, John, unless there's anything else that you want to add that, you know, to close it off or any like last, last minute thoughts. Well, I just appreciate you having me. I think you're an incredible leader. I love seeing your team absolutely crush it. You guys close the year with a bang. I have no doubt that this year will be your biggest and best year yet. And congrats on, you know, all the things, right. It's really cool to see, you know, people that, that, you know, take the initiative to build a brand. And they master that attraction marketing conversation. And you're one of those people, like you've invested a lot of time and money into building a personal brand and mastering marketing, creating your content to help people and, and you know, seeing people really, uh, you know, take that initiative and, and uh, create that, that, you know, that actual brand and build that following. And, you know, you're doing all the things, right? YouTube and, you know, putting out content for, for network marketers. Like it's, it's exciting to see. And I know this is just the beginning. So I'm proud of you. And thanks Thank for having you. me. Yeah. Thanks for being here. I know you're so, so busy. I mean, like clearly you got this massive business, but I will say just in closing, like you kind of touched on this before, but like for me before, when I was doing all that crazy, like hustling and doing whatever I was working so hard. And now I have to tell you, this is the honest truth. And I never, ever like to leave people with the impression that this business is easy because it is not. Um, but I definitely work a quarter of the hours that I used to because of attraction marketing and the systems and just what we've got in place here. So when you build this and you follow these strategies and you do it right, I mean, the time freedom is real. And you compare that with the, with the moolah, right? Cause that's what we want. Yes, exactly. That's what it's all about. Time and money. Like exactly the perfect combination. (laughs) Well, thank you so much, John. Really appreciate your time. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Absolutely. See ya.